Let's go over the different kinds of objects used in GDevelop. An object is basically anything in your game. If you can see it, it's an object. So an object can be a scene object or a global object. And they both work the same way. The only difference is that a scene object is limited to one scene and a global object applies to your entire game. So if I change my player to be a global object, I can see it in these two different scenes. To add a new object to your game, you click on the Add a New Object button at the bottom of the object panel. The engine comes with a bunch of free and paid pre-made objects in the asset store that you can open up and add straight to your game, or you can make objects from scratch. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different kinds of objects you can pick from. Starting with the sprite object, and right now we're using one for the player. So you can see the sprite object has a name, and different animations that can also have their own names. Each animation comes with its own timer and can be set to loop or not depending on what you want to do with the animation. The sprite object also comes with a collision mask which you can set to best fit the object. If you create a new sprite and add a new animation, the engine will set up the collision mask to try and fit that first image that you put into your game. The sprite object has properties, behaviors, variables, and effects. So behaviors are prepackaged game logic that make it easy to do things that would be complicated to build on your own. Like the platformer behavior that lets the character be controlled like a platformer character with the arrow keys and spacebar. To find or add new behaviors to the object, we can click the add a behavior button and we'll see dozens of behaviors that we can add to the object. And variables will be covered in a later video but this is where we store information like the player's health. And finally, effects are things like blur, brightness, drop shadows, glitching, a number of different things that you could do to the object. Next is the tiled sprite object, which again is already in game as the ground object. Tiled sprites are different than sprite objects because with a sprite object, when you expand it, it grows in size. Whereas with a tiled sprite, it repeats as it expands instead of growing in size. Which makes it really good for terrain or backgrounds, as well as for UI elements. The next object is the panel sprite object. And let's grab one from the asset store. The panel sprite object is broken into nine chunks and the top, bottom, and sides, as well as the center, expand and the corners stay the same, which makes them really useful for dialog boxes, as well as UI elements. Next is a 3D box. The 3D box is exactly what it sounds like. It's a 3D box with multiple different faces on it. And if I add an image for this, I can place it into the scene, and you'll see the 3D box. Then there's the 3D model object, which requires a GLB file to work in Engine. And if I grab one from the asset store, put it into the game, there it is. You can adjust its depth and position and rotation with the properties panel. The next object is the multi-touch joystick, which is mostly used for mobile touchscreen games. When you create the object, it'll give you some options to pick from by default, or you can make your own from scratch. If I grab one of the default options, I can place it here on screen, and you'll see the object comes with the thumb and the border, as well as some actions, conditions, and behaviors related to the joystick. Then there's three different kinds of text objects, the basic text object just comes with size, color, bold, italic, orientation, and font, for which GDevelop has a number of them built in. And I can type in what I want the text to say here. The next kind of font is a BB text. This one allows for more customization in the text field. When I place it into the scene, you can see that within the single text object, there are different effects applied to the font. And then lastly is the bitmap text, which renders text a little differently. 
more like an image than traditional text. This kind of font needs a bitmap font type and an atlas image. And we'll talk about this kind of font more in a later video, but this kind of font is especially useful for pixel art games. Because it is rendered more like an image, you can get more crisp edges than with the traditional font. The next set of objects are user interface objects. Starting with the panel sprite button, which again, like the joystick, comes with a bunch of pre-built buttons to pick from, or you can create one from scratch. Buttons automatically react to the mouse cursor or a touch on a touchscreen, and come with their own conditions to check for when those things happen. The slider object works just as you assume a slider object would work. If we grab a pre-built one here, and preview the game, we can slide the object back and forth, and you'll see we're changing the value inside the object. And this object is really useful for a settings menu. Then there's the toggle switch, which toggles things on and off when it's clicked on. The resource bar that can be used to display health or any kind of resource that's on a bar. The text input object, which is a text box you can put into your game to have players fill in text. Video, if you upload a video, preferably MP4 for compatibility reasons, you can play that video in the game. Then there's lighting. And if I put the lighting object into the game and give the player character the light obstacle behavior, you'll see that the character's collision mask that we set earlier is casting a shadow. Then there's the particle emitter that has its own video that you can use to create explosions or effects in your game. As well as the 3D particle emitter that does the same thing, but in 3D. And then there's the tile map objects, both tile map and tile map collision mask, for which you can use a third party app like tiled editor or LDTK editor to create a tile map. And then you can import it into the engine with this object. And then the last object is the shape painter tool, which can be used for so many different things that it would be hard to list them all, but it can be used as a selection tool, as an AOE marker, as a line between units, as a transition scene. It has a lot of different uses and it shows up in a lot of our tutorial videos. That's a brief overview of all of the different objects in GDevelop. We cover some of the more important ones in separate videos, but for now, check out this one.